King of the Sky by Nicola Davies. It rained and rained and rained. Little houses huddled on the humpback hills. Chimneys smoked and metal towers clanked. The street smelled of mutton soup and coal dust, and no one spoke my language. All of it told me, this is not where you belong. Just one thing reminded me of home, of sunlight, fountains, and the vanilla smell of ice cream in my Nona's gelateria. It was Mr. Evans' pigeon in their loft behind my house, cooing as if they strutted in St. Peter's Square in Rome. Mr. Evans' face was crumbled and he could hardly walk, but when his birds flew, he smiled like springtime. I stood beside him and watched. As his pigeons soared above the chimneys and the towers, up to where the sky stretched all the way to Italy. A lifetime working in a coal mine had taken Mr. Evans' breath away, so he spoke soft and slow, slow enough for me to understand. I like to see them fly, he whispered, after so long underground. Every day I came to see the pigeons. I'm training them to race, Mr. Evans said. And this one's going to be a champion. He put a pigeon in my hands. I felt its small heart racing underneath my finger and the push and power of its wings. Its head was wider than a splash of milk. Its eye blazed fire. Name him and he's yours, the old man said. I didn't have to think. Ridel Silio, I replied, king of the sky. Mr. Evans showed me how to catch the birds and slip them into a basket. Then we'd wheel the basket to the station in a barrow. How far today? Then Mr. Evans, the station master would ask. My friend would name a station up the line, five miles, 10 miles, 20 miles away, a little farther every time. They don't need a map like we do, Mr. Evans told me. They're born knowing how to find their way. All they need is a bit of practice. Back at the loft, we'd wait, eating Mr. Evans' wellish cakes and squinting up into the light. Look out now, Mr. Evans would say. Keep your, those young eyes of yours well peeled. It never took them long. From places far away, places that they'd never been, the pigeons flew home straight and fast as arrows. But the pigeon with the milk-white head was always last. Still, Mr. Evans said he'd be a winner. He's a hero, the old man wheezed. Like the pigeons in the war carrying messages, even when they were shot. Just you wait and see. Every day, Mr. Evans grew a little weaker. By racing season, he couldn't leave his bed. So I put the race wings on the pigeon's legs and took them to the station. I scoured the sky for their return and checked them in. Mr. Evans' bedroom wall was papered with their winnings, but not one for Ridel Silio, my king of the sky. 
He's got the wings for distance, Mr. Evans breathed. Here's the race he's waited for. He handed me the entry form. King of the Sky would go to Rome by train, then race back a thousand miles and more. I smoothed his feathers, looked into his eye, and put him into the basket for the journey. A part of me was going with him. I wasn't sure it would come back. The race day dawned. A storm blew in. Lightning, wind, and rain. I waited for two whole days and nights, but the pigeon with the milk-white head did not return. I sat beside my friend's bed and I told him that perhaps the sunlight and the fountains and the vanilla smell of ice cream from a thousand gelateria had made our pigeon want to stay. No, said Mr. Evans. That will only tell him this is not where you belong. The old man's eyes blazed fire. Get out there, boy, he said, and welcome him. The rain had stopped. I ran out to the loft and squinted up into the clouds. A speck, a blob, a bird, a pigeon with a milk-white head, a hero and a champion. Twelve hundred miles he'd flown from somewhere far away he'd never been. Steered north and west, finding his direction from the sun and the force that guides a compass needle. Flown until he saw the shape of humpbacked hills, the lines of little houses and chimneys, heard the clanging towers, smelled the soup and cold dust. flown down into the arms of a smiling, crying boy, the boy who knew at last that he was home. <laughs>